So now we've established some very important DNA technology processes, mechanisms, and techniques when we looked at um, chain termination sequencing. We also looked at gene cloning and restriction enzymes. We're going to continue our look at DNA technology by now talking about a new type of DNA technology known as PCR. I'm going to split this up into two separate flowcharts just to keep the information um, short in this video. So PCR1. PCR1 will be all about steps one and two, let's say. We'll just write that down as a disclaimer. Steps one and two will be done here. There's step three in the next video. PCR stands for the following. It stands for polymerase, we've seen that word before, chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction, PCR. What does this encompass? Well, let me give you a bit of background information on the process before we actually get into the steps. In terms of PCR, PCR can be defined as a method for producing, okay, this is another method for producing many copies, okay, many copies of particular gene. This is a super, super great way of producing many copies of a particular gene at hand. This is actually a preferred method because there's no bacterial cloning involved in this situation. We're actually going to be utilizing a machine to do our cloning for us. Okay, We're going to get to that. It involves a three-step cycle. Okay, So we'll get that out of the way. A three-step cycle. Um, that are going to that is going to give us the following steps. Step one is denaturation of the DNA itself. Okay, so denaturation. Step two, which I'll do over here, will be annealing. That's what it will be entitled. We'll do denaturation and annealing in this video. And step three, the final step, is extension. So three steps to PCR, we'll cover all three, two of them we'll cover in this video. And lastly, like I alluded to before, it's actually not done in bacteria, but it's done in a machine, so done in machine with what we call thermal cycles. Okay, it utilizes temperature very, very much so. Um, with thermal cycles, and these thermal cycles will be just varying temperatures. Okay, cycles of varying temperatures. That's a big theme of PCR. So let's look at the steps. In PCR, step one is called denaturation. So we'll do step one over here. Step one, which is denaturation. So let's see what denaturation is all about. In denaturation, what we have to do is raise the temperature first. The temperature is going to be key. We're going to always be looking at temperature. Temperature in the denaturation process raises above about 90 degrees Celsius. Above 90 degrees Celsius. That is very, very, very hot. Okay. Step one is denaturation. You can even sort of subtitle it and further title it by heat. Now, we know what denaturation is, right? What does it do? What is this temperature raising supposed to do? Well, it will cause the following to happen. It will separate. So it separates. What do you think it's trying to separate right now? This separates double-stranded DNA to what? Denaturation of DNA is all about separating double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA. Okay, that's really it. That's what denaturation by heat is all about. Why does this work? This works because the H bonds of DNA, do you remember where the H bonds are? Well, there are phosphodiester linkages in the backbone. I know that. I know that the nucleotides are connected to our DNA molecule via covalent bonds. Where are the H bonds? The H bonds are actually in the middle. They're the rungs of the ladder, the rungs that sort of are seen in the middle. These H bonds are actually very much weak at high temperatures. So they're weak at high temps, like 90 degrees Celsius. And for that reason, they're going to separate. They're going to denature from each other. The DNA molecules will denature. It's basically denaturation by heat is a way to sort of do what helicase does, but do it with heat 
okay? And it's a really cool way of separating DNA molecules into single-stranded DNA. Um, key fact here is that the backbone still remains intact. You might be wondering, well, what about the backbone? Does that melt away? Does that denature? No, it's actually so strong that it remains intact, okay? So that's step one covered. Denaturation by heat just to separate our double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA. Step two is known as annealing. So we'll do step two up here. Step two is considered annealing. So this might be a new term to you, but let's look at what it's all about. Annealing is all about the primer, okay? So we're going to be utilizing a primer binding to its target, binding to target. Think of that as our overall theme and goal of annealing. What I mean by this is that there are going to, of course, be two primers used in this annealing situation. Now, I want you to tell me why two primers are used. Look over here. Separates, separates double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA. So if I have a double-stranded DNA molecule and I separate it, how many DNA molecules do I end up with? Two single-stranded DNA molecules. So you can even write two in parentheses over here. So you need two primers for each, okay? So let's say, just to reiterate, one for each single-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA. So we have one for each single-stranded DNA, so that's um, the primer. So th those are the primers that we're going to be using to binding onto the target. What about these primers specifically should you know? So the primers, we've mentioned these many times over, are equal to short, um, already pre, let's say, synthesized um, single-stranded DNA, SS DNA sequences. SEQS for sequences. These are about 15 to 20 base pairs and they are a known sequence that the, the, the um, lab instructor or the lab person who's doing this knows. Okay, They know that the sequence will work. Um, it's just based off of trial and error and established knowledge. They are known sequences that anneal. This is where the name comes from. Anneal in this situation is referred to and sort of defined as the process as at which the primer binds to the beginning. So bind to the beginning of DNA target sequence. DNA target sequence. So we have these two DNA molecules and they are, we want both of them to be amplified. So we have to take a primer and get this process started. Because of the presence of a primer, you should already be thinking, well, why do we need a primer? Who needs a primer specifically? We're going to get to that in the second um, video. But overall, the annealing process is just when the primer binds to the target. Have we done that? Primer binding to target. So blah, blah, blah. Primers, short sequences, known sequences that anneal, bind to beginning of DNA target sequence. Check. We've done that. And finally, it's all about temperature. We always have to remember that temperature is a big, big role in this because PCR is all about thermal cycles and varying temperatures. So what's the temperature in this situation? So we actually turn it down a little bit. The machine turns it down to about 40 to 60 degrees Celsius in this situation. And then we can also state that the primers, in terms of temperature, anneal specifically, okay, they anneal specifically at the three prime end of target. Okay, remember that it's always at the three prime end. This is a repetitive theme, so let's make sure we understand that this is going to be where the primers will anneal because they themselves are going to be growing five prime to three prime based off of something that needs a primer, which we're going to get to in our next video.